Vicky Lenane and welcome to Embrace Therapy Podcast. I am a practicing art therapist based in Ireland. In each episode, I will interview guests from various fields of therapy and well-being with the aim to encourage healing through embracing therapy. You must have done quite a few interviews by now, have you? I have actually, yeah. Um, I started out doing them every week and then I got COVID myself, so I had to take it, breaks. And, and, and was, was, I mean, not that that was okay, but it was, was it okay in terms of it not, not being too bad or how was yeah. it for you? Yeah, you know, it was fine. Like, I think I'm lucky I don't have any underlying health issues, so it was yeah. grand for me. Um, but yeah, my husband, he's asthma, so it did affect him and he still has some effects still, like some symptoms still. So yeah, it does linger. Do you know the symptoms do just stay? Yeah. So. And, and, and do you know where you kind of caught it or any idea? Yeah. So it was picked up in the family. So um, my in-laws, they all kind of got it around the same time. And oh we're not God. sure if it's from, you know... The community itself or yeah school, but it's yeah it was it was really interesting it was like six of us one day were together for like half an hour outside and then the following week all had symptoms got the tests all positive so God. yeah oh, oh. <laughs> you know, fr- is... even with being outside yeah. Like... <laughs> yeah yeah no it's frightening it's just like, i think as i said to you kind of like as it's gone on it's like you didn't, you know, it was always, a, it was somebody kind of you heard on, on, on the news or something or other. And then slowly it's kind of like the circles have gradually got closer and closer in terms of kind of who you know who've, who've had it, um, yeah. which is quite, yeah. Yeah, it's, so true. it's like, you know, it started off being like, oh, they have it or them. Yeah. And now it's like, oh, <laughs> we know people now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I'm glad, glad you're over it anyway. And, yes. uh, yeah. No, it's, 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 you know, I actually feel like because I've had it now, I, I'm not as afraid of it. Do you know that kind of way? Like it was always. Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I suppose yeah. then for my, my family, myself as well, my parents didn't get it, thankfully, but I suppose just kind of giving them a little bit more confidence as well to think that like, you yeah, know, there is life after it. It's fine. Yeah. 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 And, and I suppose during, during it all for you, you were pretty busy. Like you, you had a lot going on. Oh, it, it went slightly mad. Yeah. yeah. I could, you know, when it started, um, cause I think initially, I think kind of, you know, kind of around about March time, I think March, kind of early April time, it kind of felt as if, yeah, yeah, we need to kind of like worry, what you know, be concerned about this. But, you know, but, but everyone was kind of not blasé about it, but they were kind of thinking, well, yeah, you know, they're having it really bad in Italy and Spain, whatever, but it's, you know, it's going to be all right here. And then suddenly, um, I just remember this email coming through from somebody about kind of... Um, what should they do? You know, they were in kind of a, an HSE or something. And then suddenly it kind of, you began to realise, hold on, <laughs> this has ramifications, you know, kind of all around. And then it kind of, yeah, it, it sparked off then. Um, yeah. So it, it was busy. And I think for a time it was kind of um, mildly chaotic in the sense of just trying to kind of uh, get a handle on what we needed to worry about and what we didn't need to worry about. And just, and then kind of putting some some degree of a plan in to actually kind of work with that. But it was, yeah, I think, you know, I, th- I think it kind of, I think for most people, you know, kind of, it kind of uh, went as well as it could. And I think it was, I think what was really great was the um, the social media element, really, and kind of just the support that kind of like was garnered in relation to that. Yeah. Um, and just kind of hearing about people's experiences and then being able to share those. I think, you know, I think that was really good. And you were the ambassador for the arts uh, for all. Um, that was Yeah, I got, got, got invited onto that. that I, it yeah. was kind of interesting because there were a number of different initiatives coming up. Um, that was one. Uh, and then there was another one in Crawford by Louise Foote um, and I've, I've forgotten the name of that one um, but yeah the arts for all kind of that was really good and they, they're, they're still going strong in the sense of just kind of um, getting the support out there um, for people who you know who've been suffering through all of this um, I know they do a lot of work with kind of learning disabilities so 
I, you know, and it's kind of a, it, I know there are kind of a, loads of groups which kind of have needs, but, you know, I think that's a particular group which I have a lot of interest in. Um, and so, you know, you, you can, you kind of hear about some of the stories in terms of them kind of trying to get their heads around in terms of, you know, the, the abilities they have in terms of what's happening. And, you know, a lot of it is kind of like, for most people it's like this it's the day-to-day -day stuff the routine which suddenly goes out the window you know yeah. and people not having the connections with people and I think for, for that kind of group um, in particular that kind of connection with people is is, is hugely important yeah. Oh, yeah I know I even myself now I'm just thinking of a client that I you know had to stop seeing basically because of it and there was no way of doing it online just because it just it just wouldn't be right for them you know it's not right for everybody the the internet and um you know trying to do art therapy online it's just not for everyone but um it was really hard to to know that like yeah. that connection was lost and then there was nothing to to fill that space and time for him and yeah it, it's hard when you know like that routine is is so important um but it was a really good initiative you know to connect people and communities together and it was a yeah was a yeah for it. I, and hopefully that's kind of um that's not something which is going to disappear yeah. um you know i think when we get back to the normal the the new normal you know the, i think there's there's probably going to be a new balance of everything you know even a kind of online working yeah. um you know yeah exactly and um, but you were busy with that and lots of other things because you were the head of ia cat at the time the chair um, so you were pretty busy in and out doing things online. So you just zoomed. I, oh, oh, well and truly zoomed out. And yeah. then you kind of had the family stuff, which was all kind of Zoom, you know, like, um, and I, I know we were playing Scrabble over Zoom and stuff, you know, and it, but it, it did get to the point <laughs> um, where kind of, you know, and I was, I was at the same time, because this was May, yeah, around May time, I'd been external examiner for the LaSalle course in Singapore. Yeah. So in theory, I should have been out there in May um, doing the visit, uh, which I'd done sort of the previous three years. So mm -hmm. there was a whole week of kind of Zoom calls, mm -hmm. you know, which were for like two or three hours, kind of yeah. every day. And I, <laughs> and I kind of got, I think a lot, like a lot of people, I kind of got interested in backgrounds, <laughs> you know, rather than people themselves in terms yeah. of, you know, and kind of like my background. I can see, I can see, and you can see my background is absolutely <laughs> plain because I've had to position myself somewhere kind of out of the way. Um, but it's kind, of, it's kind of, it's been really interesting, kind of just particularly on um, some of the calls, you know, where you would have had about twenty people in the meeting or so, and you kind of like, so the amount, you know, kind of the. I mean, I think online meetings can can work really well, but quite often you kind of like you just take a back seat and let kind of, a, and then you so you suddenly get interested in kind of like what what's going on in somebody's house, you know, kind of whatever. Um, but yeah, um, but absolutely zoomed out, kind of, um, um, particularly May, May, June, May, June, yeah, May and June was were were pretty pretty kind of. Um, pretty difficult in relation to that because there is only so much that you can take um you know yeah but I think the interesting thing about it all was that um and I think kind of the online working as well was just seeing how much of that kind of started to develop the interest and people got interested in the kind of the online trainer that I think that Emma Cameron did um through IACAT and um and suddenly you were kind of hearing about people who you know would have had no intention of doing any kind of online work and it just wouldn't have been in the vocabulary it wouldn't you know it, it just wasn't wasn't there um and then suddenly they're kind of saying mm, you know actually do you know this can work um and i had i'd been supervising a, a play therapist and she started to, to to do some online working and she was really kind of quite hesitant at the time and she did some training but she kind of went ahead um and, and initially she, she kind of regarded it as supportive working. Um, and she and she was kind of very hesitant at first of all, but she was amazed at, at for some of the kids, the way that it kind of um, helped boost their self-esteem and just their kind of awareness because of, and it was kind of simple things like being in control of the iPad, 
in their own space and actually kind of being able to say can i show you this now can i show you that now you know i i guess for all intents and purposes i look at it very therapeutically then you start to question well you know you know what's happening but but nevertheless the reality was that for, the, for those kids at that time in that particular situation in that particular stressful situation they actually gained something and were actually able to use it in a really positive way um and i just think that's that's really interesting that um you know kind of those so this kind of alien world that there had been for many of us um has suddenly become something which has potential yeah. i don't think it's an old i think the important thing is it, it's not an alternative you know it's not about kind of like online or, or kind of not online i think it's about this being in your toolkit in a sense and actually you know questioning whether whether it might be appropriate at some point um you know if you were starting off working with with a client you might actually do an initial consultation online yeah. you know um uh, and kind of occasionally you know if if meet if kind of a face-to-face -face meeting is difficult but you know they were able to to do a kind of an online um therapy session you know it kind of means that potentially there can be some consistency you know yeah yeah um, I think it's it's a really good point that like you know having maybe fifty fifty you know because even today you know a lot of people that I I would see would be up the mountains <laughs> and because of yeah. the cross they're like oh no we'll just do it online today do you know it's it's actually being a little bit more flexible and um, yeah you know, more control and power over their choices so yeah it makes things I, th I think where the where the difficulty is and it's not a difficulty I think where the issue is is kind of like do you know kind of when a, when a client sort of starts working with you first of all and there's kind of a degree of kind of maybe testing of kind of well you know what's this relationship about you know how far what does it mean yeah you know, you know you know what's the what are the boundaries of this and kind of often the client actually sort of come into terms with those even just those terms in terms of what they actually mean you know um you know particularly if they haven't had therapy before so i can see how you might want to choose quite carefully how you use it and when you use it even at kind of a particular stage in the kind of the the, the therapy that you you know you're in with the client um or the client is in with you yeah. so um i don't i don't think it's 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 quite i don't think it's simply just okay we do this because we can't do that i think it's about can we use this and how do we use this yeah. um and is that going to be, you know, because it's all about the environment, you know, in relation to where the client is and how safe it is for them to be able to kind of use that kind of way of working. But, but nevertheless, I think, I think, I think it's a, I think it's an important move in a way. Um, and I think, um, I, I really do think kind of the trainings need to take it up in terms of actually kind of equipping students with kind of that kind of experience. Yeah. I think one of the issues is, is um, a lot of organisations are probably going to be thinking, actually, this might be a useful way of actually working with clients. You know, um, yeah, you know, it, it, you know, they might see it as kind of in some ways more efficient. I don't know, but I can see, I can see organisations kind of like asking, you know, when the job interview comes along, um, you know, have you had any experience of online therapy? I can see that being kind of quite a key one yeah that's a really good point yeah i can imagine that too um and and the group aspect of it as well is quite impressive you know that you can have so many um because i was hopping on to yeah. sand tray therapy and it was from canada and there was like 160 of us <laughs> <laughs> and it was it was just like what like it was crazy um <laughs> And it was, it was cool because it was like nighttime here and it was just morning there. And, you know, this lady's having her cup of coffee and we're all like so tired. And she's like, oh, welcome. <laughs> you know? but, um, and did it work? Did, uh, did you, was it work for you? It really did. And I think, you know, the people that made it work um, were actually the participants as well. Um, yeah. It was lovely because it wasn't a webinar style, so we could still see one another if we chose to. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, that, that interactive part, the, the, the people that were, you know, in the audience, as you'd say, would really participate. And it was really nice. Um, 
And then there was always that option for when it was finished to email some questions if you didn't get yeah. it. So then it felt even more, um, especially like if you're a bit introverted, like I am, it, it can be hard to just like put up your hand and be like, I have a question, you know, so get, <laughs> getting those questions in and then maybe getting the answer and then maybe having that opportunity to be like, Oh, okay. Okay. That was me. And then maybe saying something else. It was, yeah. I don't know. I find it really good. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I, um, Louise, Louise Gart and I, but we did some we did some online training um, for an in, we did an introduction to kind of art therapy, and and we actually did an experiential kind of exercise. So I had, I had <coughs> half the group and Louise had the other half, and it was kind of really interesting because you know we'd asked people to when when they were making kind of um, their art or whatever, you know, that if they could position the camera so that you know we we could could see what was happening yeah. and it's kind of completely different from you know if you had to have them in a kind of a space people have the opportunity in a space to go off into a corner but you can still observe what's happening as the facilitator or whatever um and it was kind of it was kind of interesting that we were kind of maybe kind of it felt as if we were intruding a little bit more Although kind of some people, you know, didn't position the kind of the camera so we could see exactly what they were doing, you know. And, and, and so it was about kind of like trying to find a balance between kind of the needs as a facilitator and the needs of this. But it, it was it was an, it was kind of um, it was very fascinating kind of even just having the, the audio kind of uh, on as well, you know, kind of just hearing the noises. Yes, and that was yes. one other thing that came. One of the things that came up from people, they could just hear all these noises happening, you know, coming in different spaces. Um, but yeah, the, the experiential bit is kind of interesting. Mm. It's very interesting um, in terms of the yeah, just the just the, the thinkings around it because it really does challenge everything that you've kind of you've known before I've known before in terms of being in a room with people actually um, you know in some ways you kind of observe people I think you almost observe people more oh yeah, um, yeah all the small little nuances yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so I think you know I, th I think it's gonna be really interesting kind of like hearing about any kind of experiences and research after all this in terms of I think particularly from the uh, client's perspective yeah it's made me think actually of my dentist, which is really strange, but <laughs> but my dentist, he's actually going to write a paper about how um, COVID has affected people's teeth because um, so many people have come yeah. in because they're grinding their teeth and they're breaking their teeth. So I'm thinking about like, do you know, how many papers are going to come out with the effects of this? You know, we're going to be like, you know, zoomed out of it and thinking about people's facial expressions and stuff from now on. And um, and then, you know, oh, absolutely. The dentist is just like, yeah, like the amount of broken teeth because of the stress of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's funny, you, 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 don't, you just don't think of these kind of areas where kind of like, you know, these effects are kind of manifesting themselves, like in the dentist's chair. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He's he's taking yeah. loads of photos of everyone's teeth at the moment and <laughs> putting them together. You know, it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, just going back to uh, the art therapy side of things and how you did that work with autonomy with uh, Louise. Um, but art therapy has been something that I suppose, you know, it was it ninety eight that you qualified or ninety five. 88. 88. Oh, sorry. I'm like getting the digits wrong. Right. Yeah, right. you know, it's yeah. I yeah. It's I'm I'm a little bit long in the tooth for this um, feels. So I I qualified in 88. So that's kind of 32 years now. Mm. I think 32 years. Yeah. Which um, and it's kind of you know as everyone says it just flashes by but. Um, yeah, no, it's been a, it's been a kind of interesting journey, and I think kind of the Irish aspect has been the kind of wouldn't say the more interesting, but the kind of um, a kind of bit, I suppose, a bit of the icing on the cake, to be honest, because because my experiences was was always with learning disabilities in the sense that I I trained as a nurse back in nineteen seventy <laughs> something or other, um, yeah, you know, and I did my three years and. Um, I kind of left and I, you know, and I decided I want to go to the art college. So I went to art college. 
And then, of course, you come out of art college and, and you know, you come out, I mean, I suppose then, I suppose it's changed slightly, I think, but in a sense, you know, the career's guidance was kind of like two months before the end of the year, end of the course, do you know what I mean? And so in a sense, and I, and I can remember one person <clears throat> on the course actually saying that they wanted to go and do art therapy and... I think most of us were deriding this poor girl, you know, in relation to why on earth, you know, what, because we, we knew nothing about what it, what it was about. So, um, so kind of, I decided, you know, that, um, you know, I was going to be a professional artist. I mean, that's what I was, you know, that's what you do. Mm. So two children later, um, you know, kind of like reality hits like a bus and I got a job in the hospital that I trained in as a nurse, which is a learning disability, dis learning disability hospital just outside of Bristol. And um, I, th I saw this job come up and it was for, a, um, I thought it was title was kind of a, hand a handicraft teacher or, or something or other. And it was to take over a handy, a, what was a handicraft department. It was, and it was just full of kind of um, women, um, you know, sort of the youngest were doing about 18 or 19 up to kind of like 70s or 80s who spent all day long kind of either knitting or um, uh, making stools and various things. Um, anyway, I got the job and I thought I'll do this for a couple of months and then I'll go and do an MA. <laughs> Yeah. And I and I, I I I loved it. I stayed and I loved it. And that's when my kind of interest in the art making and kind of like therapy and art therapy came came about. Simply because there used to be around about forty people, forty women in this little department. There were two members. They would come from nine to twelve, and then from I think one o'clock or half one until four o'clock mm. and the reality was that of the 40 women there were probably about 10 10 of them who were actually when I say doing anything useful I mean I mean that in the kind of the sense that kind of um they were doing they were making things that could be sold because oh. that was the whole ethos of the kind of a department that they would actually make things to be sold usually to mostly to kind of the staff of the hospital so there were kind of like 30 odd that weren't doing anything useful, so to speak, in terms of what we call the finished object. And, and this culminated in um, me kind of realising that what they used to do was that they, some of them used to make, um, would make uh, dishcloths. They would be knitting dishcloths, yeah? Yeah. And at the end of the day, the staff would go round and look to see what any imperfections, and they would just undo the dishcloth okay mm -hmm. and i think you're gone there Yeah, the, yeah, the, they 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 undid the kind of um, the dishcloths and other things because you know they'd been knitting jumpers or something. Um, so the reality was, <laughs> you could and, it, and this is this is it's like a black joke really. You could be knitting the same art, article, the same dishcloth for months, years potentially. Um, and it was kind of really interesting because they didn't see nobody saw that being an issue. Do you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, and I suppose what was really, what was really kind of easy at the time was because um, for me was that kind of, of the kind of 40 odd, there were kind of like probably two thirds who weren't really doing anything. And quite often they would just be looking at magazines or something and actually falling asleep. And we just got in art materials and we started kind of offering kind of art materials to people and people started drawing, people started doing things. And, and basically, kind of, cut a very long story short, you know, it kind of changed to an art department. And suddenly we started kind of um, the, uh, the, the the service users, as we'd call them, you know, that they, they started engaging in stuff that we had never engaged with before. And first of all, it was quite alien to them. 
um, and to the staff as well, as well. And so there was a lot of coaxing, there was a lot of encouragement, there was a lot of um, fun involved in just trying to get people kind of to take a chance. Yeah. And it was so fascinating seeing how people changed in terms of their character and personality mm. and relationships with you kind of when you engage creativity with them um and it caused it caused um um ripples in a sense and i know there's two staff members barbara and um denise kind of found it initially very difficult because they started hearing things that kind of other members of staff were saying kind of in the hospital like um all they do up there is play you know they don't do any because you know it, it kind of moved away from this kind of handicraft kind of um, ideal of the finished object although that still continued we didn't at all. but yeah um but but gradually kind of we won them around and and people got interested in terms of what was happening and then we started um doing things like we i know uh, i don't know how this came about but we started putting up um um, some of the some of the service users work in in the um, in the health department in the offices in Bristol, you know. So we all went off, troops them off, you know, a few of them off, and and suddenly there was a realization and an acknowledgement of these people that had been incarcerated for God knows how many years in this kind of institution on the outskirts of a city that you know who uh, most of them had been forgotten about, and so there was something about. There was something about taking the hospital out as opposed to bringing the hospital, you know, bringing the community in. It was kind of, you know, and that was really important. It was, and that was around the time of um, um, the move to kind of communities and the, the realise that, yeah, and the, 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 work, the working in relation to, you know, the closure of the long stay hospitals and opening up community kind of smaller developments. That, that all, it kind of all coincided. And, and it just got my interest going in terms of the potential of what people were actually engaging with. And some, one particular client who, when she kind of engaged with art making, she would suddenly, um, her mind would switch. She would say very little kind of any other time, but she was suddenly you'd get this kind of narrative happening with the, um, wow. with the image that she was making it. And, it, and for all intents and purposes, it was kind of quite um, arbitrary and quite um, uh, it was very difficult to understand, um, almost as if she was kind of hallucinating. Um, but gradually, kind of like from it, you could pick out certain certain characters or people within this. It's cut a long story short. It was around abuse. Oh wow! Um, and it yeah, and it was kind of that was that was quite a shock, really. Mm. You know, um, so you know, so we, we, you know, we're going back to the to the mid eighties when. Okay, I mean, abuse has always been around, but in terms of how we talk about abuse and how we understand about abuse, that that was kind of, I guess that was kind of, um, you know, people were coming to terms with the fact that this happened, and the fact that it happened within an institution, or it happened to people who were now in, in institutions. I mean, that was kind of like a relatively a new concept in terms of it being spoken about kind of more openly you know in terms of how that might affect or cause have a cause to affect kind of somebody's um ability to kind of uh, be in the world yeah um so that was kind of quite a pivotal moment for me which kind of then led me on to kind of um kind of um needing to kind of like explore yeah. what art therapy was so that's that so I was really, really, really lucky that I was seconded to do the training. Um, really lucky. I know that I was so lucky to do that. So yeah. So that was so. And then I, after that, I um, um, worked as a clinician and then a clinical manager. And and before I left in two thousand, um, we had um, I was man managing an art and drama therapy department, um, working in the community and in uh and in the the hospitals that were still open at that time okay. and then i got involved in some training in bath they 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 started to run a um a postgraduate diploma in art therapy and i got involved there and then i knew um alice burns who started the um cork course off and i'd worked with her um on in bat i was i was a uh, 
I was a I can't remember what I was. I was vice chair for a time in BAT. So I, and she'd started the course and then left after two years. And then I kind of slipped in um, and fell in love with Cork. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, and so that that, that really kind of, um, yeah, I mean, the, the, the training, the MA, you know, we finally got the MA training in 2005 or 2006, I think it was, you know, that was, um, that was that was kind of a difficult time because the course was still finding its its feet, uh, and there were huge issues around. Um, sorry. You're okay. Can I flush the toilet? Can I flush the toilet? Yeah. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Life must go on. <laughs> Very considerate. <laughs> Very. Uh, Appreciate. So that. Uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah, so all the moves we had yeah, yeah. <laughs> in relation to to the to the art therapy course, which I think you know, I think the thing about it was that um, every move was a better move. Yeah. I think you know, and, and it, the, it's it's really funny, really, because um, every move was also a move slightly closer to Crawford College. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's bizarre, no, quite literally. And so the final move, you know, which happened in two thousand and. 17 when I left when I retired there was actually into the grand parade you know right um, so I only got to kind of be in the building for about two months to kind of one uh, but the view from the office was 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 fantastic but yeah. but it's interesting to think because I think about kind of that journey that I've had kind of quite quite every now and again and one of the things that I, <laughs> the biggest regret I have um and it was kind of ambition and um, it sounds as if they, we live next door to a dentist at the moment. Um, <laughs> it's, one, it's one hell of a big drill they use there. Um, uh, the, my biggest, biggest regret is that when, when I started to do the training, I started gradually reducing the amount of time that kind of people would come to this department for the non art therapy bit. Yes. And particularly this group of elderly women. Um, and that is my, uh, and it was kind of gradually we went down to kind of, they only came in the morning or the afternoon. One day, and then it was kind of like three days, three mornings a week, and then two days. And then I finally stopped it. And it was, it was only kind of, I don't know, I don't know, a few years after that, I thought, how selfish was I to do that? Do you know, in the sense of trying to really get my, get the, the to lay the foundation for art therapy, you know, I was carrying a flag and, mm -hmm. um, you know, my pride, whatever, got, got in, got in, uh, in the way of actually kind of what was actually quite important for some people. Um, and that's you know that's my biggest regret and so it was interesting when taking on the training because I, I i did some clinical work um you know kind of privately but not very much and and interestingly that was with learning disabilities and there was always part of me thinking that i kind of i would love to get back involved in that and i i didn't know how you know there wasn't kind of time to do it as such um and that's when um, we started some relationships with some of the community centres outside in Cork, um, Mayfield Arts Centre in Cooig. I don't know whether you can remember them. Can you remember? They've been coming. Yes, yes, I can. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. So they started coming in to use the studios, and um, I know some of the students got involved with them, and then, um, and then. Uh, they went to and Madrid, we got didn't they? They did some projects. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. And then we got involved with the Cope um, Foundation, yeah. uh, oh, um, yeah. kind of through 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 our Nash, yeah, um, who's who's involved in the Arts for All, and that was really important as well. And um, kind of uh, some of their um, um, individuals were coming on a on a Thursday morning, so there was a lot of interaction. And then, and I would. I would take myself out of the office and actually just go in there sometimes and just sit down with them. And, you know, it was just so nice to be kind of on that 
working on that kind of level again oh, yeah. that face-to-face -face stuff because you have to do that you, you know um and again just seeing how um people were engaging with creativity and that's when the idea for the for the ex for the um exhibition the art of inclusion came up you know with the crawford gallery and um the the, the city council um and that was really actually getting back in in you know with that kind of client group um, mm -hmm. and just um kind of working with the you know the idea of kind of open studios and just just that you know because they're a forgotten uh, they have been a forgotten kind of group of individuals oh, yeah. who have a real passion for kind of um, kind of art making you know it's you know, it's all kind of often classed under outsider art but it's actually more than that because they're not outsiders in terms of the work in terms of what their desires are to work in. and particularly with the Kui group you know where they would have had exhibitions it was very much about promoting it wasn't about kind of hiding away mm -hmm. in any shape or form so so that's that's been really important just just um uh, kind of that engagement with um with those individuals um which kind of has kind of taken a bit of an abeyance at the moment but Hmm. who knows in the future I actually that might um, be something I found a, a, a notebook of mine from college and in it was the outsider art um leaflet the advertisement and um promotion of that art is inclusion piece and yeah I found it the other day it's gorgeous even just the yeah the oh it was it was it was so it was so oh, I can't tell you how <laughs> <laughs> how important it was do, do you know there was the we had the exhibition in 2013 so we had three different venues and it's the only kind of time in my life ever that I've kind of do you know when you kind of like feel really satisfied with something and you think yes this is absolutely right that was the only time where I felt kind of like that and it was the it was there were about, it was about two or three hours before the opening in the um in the in the Crawford Art Gallery <clears throat> and I was walking around and there was a piece of work um hanging in the atrium part of the gallery which had been done by this guy Johnny I can't remember his surname and he was a he was an individual who was at um, St Raphael's um hospital in Yall and he used to work with John McHarg I don't know whether do you know jo yeah 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 he was an art therapist he, he retired from the bonnard center there kind of a couple of years ago um and it was a piece of work that he'd done and we i visited the the center there um to choose some work and i'd gone with jessica carson and this guy johnny had made this church um this model church and had stained glass windows and john said well what they were going to do is we're going to put a light bulb in there and sort of, you know, kind of, um, Jessica and I are kind of looking at each other thinking, yeah, that's, that's, that's all right. But it's, it just felt a bit twee or, you know, a little bit, whatever. Yeah. And beside him was this rack. Um, it was like a, a rack for, a, for a, a, a loom or something. And hanging over it was this, um, I think it was about 25 feet in length or 30 feet in length, was this, um, and it was about three foot wide no about two and a half foot wide a paper and Johnny had stenciled out um in writing the nativity story in his in his kind of his own words from this wow. book and as he cut the, the the stencils out he put um colored paper behind it you know cellophane so it was like a, it was almost like a stained glass window we, we said, look, no, no, this would look really good. This, but we had no idea where it was going to be. Mm. And they'd hung it in, this, in the atrium part of Crawford Gallery. And it was kind of, it just hung there like a, it was like um, a proclamation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Fergus Finley, um, he did the opening for that. And I can remember him looking at it. And I was explaining to him about John, uh, Johnny. And Johnny was nearly not going to be there because... He, the the centre had closed down. This is the issue about community um, yes. movement, in a sense. And he'd moved to this kind of small community home with about, I don't know, three or four other people. And the thing was that kind of like the centre, you know, if Johnny comes to the opening, everybody has to come to the opening. 
and we don't want to take everyone to the opening. So for kind of a, a day or two, there was this, this issue going on that kind of Johnny wasn't going to be there at the opening. Mm -hmm. And John in the end, John Mark in the end, they kind of like sorted it out. Um, mm -hmm. So why am I saying that? I was saying that because it, because I can remember Johnny kind of like, and he, Johnny was deaf and, um, and he, he had difficulty with his speech. He was explaining to um, Fergus Finley kind of the, you know, what he'd done and just how proud he was of it. And that was, that was when I thought this all makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it all kind of culminated in that one moment. I thought this makes complete sense for me, yeah. you know, cause it was hard work and, you know, oh, it was beautiful. It, I remember it. It was so gorgeous walking around the space and just seeing that work. It was gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. And the state yeah. Black, it, that part was actually on the leaflet. That was the main out yeah, part of it. Yeah. I remember that. It was so gorgeous. Yeah. And it was just so, I, what was as well as interesting was the reaction from the art college as well. We had fantastic, um, uh, I mean, uh, all of Flynn at the time, it was head of college, was, was amazingly supportive. There were loads of people really supportive. But I, I say this uh, reservedly in the sense that kind of like, I, I think kind of maybe some of the staff, not in the department, but in the, you know, in, in the art college itself, they actually found it difficult to know how to relate to it. Yeah. Um, whereas the students actually mm -hmm. related to it extremely well. You know, and the comments from the fine arts students, whoever, were kind of like they were amazed. At, and, and but the, the the other members of staff found it really difficult. They didn't quite know how to pitch. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. because it, you know, if you acknowledge that kind of somebody who's not gone through the art system has actually produced something which is actually kind of has has a more than a merit has a has a kind of a real creative ability and yeah. a significance. What does that say to the actual kind of you know, yeah. the whole regime of the, the, the fine art system? Yeah. It kind of turns it on on its head. Yes, which is unsettling. Which I think is wonderful. <laughs> unsettling for them, but wonderful. Yeah, <laughs> make it up like yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was so, that was real profound work. It was gorgeous. I, I feel so lucky to have walked through it and around it and experienced it. Um, and and what a gallery space it to occupy. God. Oh, well I, th I think, well, I think that was the thing, you know, kind yeah. of when you, when we suddenly realised that we had the, um, the Crawford Gallery on board, you know, with Anne Bodar, um, who's the creator there, then you think, okay, yeah. <laughs> you know, we've got the ground floor gallery and, you know, it was a huge space. So it was brilliant. That was absolutely tremendous. Yeah. Yeah. And all, all those steps I, made it just so much more profound, like, you know, those kind of. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and just having some of the kind of, because there was kind of an international involvement as well, because I know there were artists from Madrid mm -hmm. and from San Francisco and New York. Um, you know, I, I know kind of time where we were thinking, what the hell have we done? <laughs> Do you know, in just in terms Oh, and stuff, stuff being held up in customs in airports because, you know, because it was classed as art. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, kind of those, those, those little things. But yeah, no, it was, it was really good. It was really good. Yeah. Yeah, really. And I think it was important. I, but I think it was also particularly important for the students as well on the, on the, on the art therapy course, on the MA course as well, in just in terms of actually just having an awareness of this kind of um, way of making and because there is that kind of issue, isn't there? Kind of like, um, I think uh, there was something of a day from someone in relation to the, you know, to the dialogue with the art, the arts council and just the whole kind of issues there are in relation, particularly in terms of kind of community work, um, what kind of work in the community, you know, in terms of what's what's the, what's the what's the what's the separation between kind of arts facilitation and art therapy, you know, when does community art making become something different? And mm -hmm. it, it's kind of um, it's kind of a difficult one. Um, mm -hmm. I think kind of has been has been said by many people over the years. You know, it's kind of like the dialogue that needs to happen in relation to to that. Um, and I think that was something that kind of we, we got involved as well, we, particularly with Mary Brett and John Hart, but Mary that, Brett. That was spectacular. Yeah, I loved that. Yeah, yeah that was gorgeous. Um, and she has, she, had a very, she has a very clear notion of kind of like the separation between the two and, mm -hmm. and has that understanding. Um, 
And I think kind of the important thing is that kind of that how that gets disseminated to other artists as well. So there's, that's, there's that kind of understanding. You know, I, I think, you know, there's, there's some very meaningful kind of um, discussions and collaborations to be held between artists and art therapists, really, um, in, in just in terms of like realising there is a spectrum of kind of possibilities you know, if you put arm it up, you know, simple art making at the bottom, one end and kind of art therapy at the other. Um, and I, you know, and it's, it's, it's something that kind of, well, I, th I think there's always that important question that kind of we have, I have every now and again in terms of what actually is the importance of art to therapy, you know, what sense does it mean? Yeah. Does yeah. it have? Um, and I think sometimes it changes in different contexts. Um, changed at different times um, and I think kind of there's something interesting about kind of what what you bring to it in terms of your background 100%. you know coming on to the and how sometimes that influences um, the way that you want to take it mm -hmm. you know whether that's client groups or initiatives or just just how you work and and what your needs are that arise from that so Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, you know, it's a very personal journey. Yeah. And in some ways it complicates things because <laughs> yeah. it would be really, it would be really kind of, you know, on a, on a, on a bad Friday afternoon, it would be really good if art therapy was a simple black and white thing, which only happened in certain situations with certain people and in certain ways. It and would it could be and measured. That be, and it could be measured. Absolutely. That would be an absolute dream. Yeah. Um, but we know that it's not like that at all. And I think a lot of it is that kind of, and I think the way that kind of art therapy has um, kind of changed over the years, even from its inception, is that mm -hmm. is the way that kind of people have come to it and have found what they needed to, to find, and which is then take them on their journey. And, and, and what I think what happens with that is that they then influence um, kind of the understanding of what art therapy is or isn't and that sometimes pushes the boundaries um and pe sometimes people find that kind of a little little difficult you know yeah. um but that's the that's the reality of what we're in um, yeah, for sure and i think i think it's a bonus rather than the deficit you know rather than an issue or a difficulty as such yeah it's like it has a turbo engine art like you know what i mean like it's like all of a sudden it's like because like for me like i started out as art artist in the community um i did like work experience in skibbereen and west cork and in there and then you know in tala as well um under hillary moss but i was an art facilitator you know just that was yeah like yeah really a couple of couple of weeks there and and noticing that oh, i love this job i love this work but there's something extra going on. Like what you just said, like a few minutes ago, you know, when you're in a group and you see somebody getting something else out of it, you know, yeah. so I remember bringing in cabbage leaves and doing prints with them. And like the whole thing yeah. was about like getting the conversation going about maybe the farm and having Irish music on and, and the cabbage and bacon. I wanted that conversation. That's what I had in my head. And the, the, the men sat there and they, um, they put the paint on the leaves and they were touching the leaves and they started making prints, but they went somewhere, you know, they did mm. chat, but they went somewhere. So it was like initially then that I really was like, okay, yeah, there's something extra to it. It's got that turbo part. It's got something else, you know? Yeah. 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 And it's, it's having that kind of both willingness and openness to actually let it go somewhere different than what you were anticipating with, with a cabbage leaf. Yes. Um, <laughs> we, and that, and that's, and that's the important bit, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's that, that willingness for it to go somewhere slightly different. Yeah. Um, in terms of what, you know, a preordained kind of, this is, this is, you know, this is exactly what's going to happen in the session. Yeah. Da -da 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 and, yeah. but that, and that, I think the thing is that kind of, kind of when you're in that situation, I mean, sometimes it can initially feel a little bit, anxiety provoking yes like, where, yeah. <laughs> where the hell is this going yeah. you know um I, I, am i going to be able to hold it what you know in terms of what am i holding what well, you know but you i mean you realize you you learn don't you yeah your well, own abilities with with that 
that's it. Like that was one example. Like I have so many examples of being, you know, an art facilitator and feeling out of my depth. And then like yourself, like, you know, reaching out and looking out for an MA to support me in the next part. Cause I wanted to keep going with it. So then yeah. you know, that's when I found Cork, but um, you know, it is just that it's just like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling really anxious in this because there's something coming up. Like even one time I'm um, doing art facilitation in St. Pat's and they were just making cards. It was Mother's Day and they were making Mother's Day cards and just that sticking down that repetitive kind of um, motion. But then the actual thing about mothers, do you know, there was something yeah, profound yeah. about that and yeah. it was meant to be just a card making <clears throat> thing and then it went into something else. Um, but yeah, it does. It it just does that. And if you allow it to, like you said, it can it can change. Um, but then, yeah, getting the extra qualification just changed everything. You know, it. Just- yeah, because I, I, I think kind of the the extra qualification or the kind of the experience in terms of mm. working with therapy, it kind of gives you that kind of framework to hold to hold stuff in. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the important thing. You know, it's kind of. Um, I know sort of back in the early days, it's like, I don't know whether you were like this when you came out of college, but when, you know, kind of when, when I came out, it was like, if this is going to work, I need a sink. <laughs> and it was like, yeah. it's like, it's like my whole life, you know, the, the, the therapeutic advancement <laughs> that's going to happen depends on a sink. Do, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, which was you, you realize now it's quite, kind of quite ludicrous. Um, and I, and I, I jest only slightly with that in the sense that, you know, um, kind of access and like just having a, you know, the complete range of materials. I, I can remember we used to go into schools and um, a colleague of mine, I mean, she'd, she'd, she'd fill a, fill a car with, with stuff to, you know, because she had to have that. You know, and I I think that's more about uh, a therapist's anxiety than it is about kind of like an understanding of kind of where a client should be. The the most terrible story I have about this is that um, when when I worked, uh, yeah, when I worked as a clinician, when I was working clinically, whatever, I used to do a lot of community work. So I'd have stuff in in the back of my car to take. Sometimes it would be the client's folders and just art materials in boxes and stuff like that. And I used to have to drop the three kids off to school in the morning before I went to work. And it was kind of so stressful. And this one particular morning, we had to pick up this, this um, my, my son's friend, Ben, who played the tuba. So uh, we stopped by his house and he comes down the steps with this tuba. Huge thing. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, where the <laughs> does this tuba go because the kids do you know what kids are like they have you know they have one bag for, for pee they've got a bag for their school books a bag there oh so the, and it was a four fiesta yeah. so i opened the boot up and it's kind of it's full of art materials but in one particular thing i i'd made this doll's house mm. which was about i suppose about two foot high and about two foot wide it was it was it was made out of two drawer two small drawer fronts put together oh, and it had a kind of cardboard roof on and stuff and I looked at the ha- looked at the um, house and I looked at Ben's tube and I thought one's got to go something's got to go here because we're not going to fit in the car so I took the doll's house out and just put it on the road and stamped on it oh. <laughs> to get to put the tube in <laughs> Oh. So the kids, you know, the kids are kind of like, what? <laughs> what's, what's... <laughs> but actually, mm. it kind of provided a really kind of important lesson in the sense, actually, that that doll's house wasn't important. It wasn't really important for the clients. It was important for me in terms of working with the clients yeah. because you can actually make a, you can make a house out of anything. You can create a space for it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, but <laughs> yeah, so... But I think I think all of that comes with your own confidence, doesn't it? You know, as you, as yeah, you... yeah, absolutely. Like you know, definitely at the start, I was like, I have to have gold and silver paint, like all of the time, because they need it, oh. and and that kind of thing. And like now, I don't have gold and silver paint anymore. Like I've, you know, like it's not a necessity. We can make it goldish, you know, we can yeah. make silverish, yeah. and yeah. and that kind of thing. Um, but it was it was what I held it up as 
to me and the meaning of that. And, you know, you know, there was loads of examples. The sink definitely was one of them as well. But, you know, that that definitely was something I had to let go. But you do you kind of realize then. I remember at one time I had like a big pencil case and that was it. That's all I was bringing um, because I realized that, you know, every time I bring something um, that I think is wonderful, no one was going for it, <laughs> you know, as well. That's another thing. Yeah. You're carrying yeah. this like yourself with a dollhouse or whatever. I was carrying something massive like clay, bags of clay or something. And, and yeah, it just, so it is that it's just showing up with whatever you have to bring, I suppose, you know, Ooh. just yourself sometimes is enough and, in a piece of paper <laughs> you know doesn't yeah really yeah yeah but um yeah and it yeah. I, and I think it's it's kind of understanding who you are as a, as a therapist as well in terms of yeah and what you want to be um because I think I mean the great thing is is that kind of like you know there aren't clones as therapists there, everyone's an individual um you know with your own personality your own interests your own experiences um and your own ways of working and I, th I think that's really important for clients to be able to kind of um to have that where, where it's possible you know to have that ability to choose who they actually kind of work with um, and obviously that's slightly more slightly more difficult in a hospital say or kind of a community setting um but yeah yeah. I, you know, I think our personality as therapists is, is kind of really important yeah. and, to and develop. And giving people the permission that, that, like, they do have a choice, you know, a lot of the time. I know you're saying in hospitals they don't necessarily have that choice, but um, definitely in private practice they have that choice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so thank you. <laughs> like this is <laughs> such a gorgeous conversation. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Vicky, uh, you're wonderful to do this. And I, I, it's just great hearing, I, you know, I'm not sure about my story, but, but hearing people kind of on a, I suppose in a, in a more informal way, but for informal, straight formal way, but kind of, you know, just, just, just chatting really in relation to yes. who they are and what they've been doing. Um, Cause there are some, there are, there are some wonderful people out there. Um, and I think, you know, it, that's in relation to all of the kind of creative therapies, but, you know, I'd say particularly in relation to, to the art therapy, you know, consider the number of people there are now kind of working yeah, there's a lot in of Ireland, them. you know, and there's a, there's a huge experience um, there. Um, and, it, and it's what's been really great, I'll finish on this, what's been really great is that kind of, I know when we started the course first of all, kind of a lot of quite often students would be looking to the UK, the States, kind of Europe, in terms of the expertise. Mm -hmm. They wanted people. Now, that expertise is in Ireland. And that's, that's the most fantastic kind of point to have achieved, really, you know. Because, yeah. um, you know, people, some people out there doing some wonderful work. And it's only been, like you said, 15 years or so, um, you know, of the, the course being available. Now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that you know, so it's it's still in its infancy, you know, and in some ways it's it's still bedding in. Um, if a course ever bed is, beds in, because I think all the time you're having to um, adapt and change to the changes in the workplace. You know, like going back to the online therapy, like that, that is something which you know, as I said, I think kind of they need to kind of explore and kind of equip kind of um, graduates with. Yeah. Um, but even the place has changed dramatically um yeah. and just how we relate to kind of other professions professionals as well kind of is you know that that's really kind of important as well kind of in getting the getting the the word out there in terms of what what it is who we are and what we do and what we need to be able to do uh, getting that recognition absolutely yeah that's all part of the journey yeah I, I I'm on the council this year and uh, you I, are indeed yeah yeah <laughs> so I think yeah, I mean you probably only had one or two meetings but but how are you enjoying it yeah it's it's intense like the, you know it definitely is that like you know running the race with the, the the torch kind of thing you know like passing it on passing on the baton but um it, it's quite a fast pace that uh, the last council had had made so it's it's nice yeah. to have that behind us um but i want to keep it keep it going you know um yeah yeah I, I think 
I, th I think kind of, you know, the, the I think, you know, the, the, there are some really, really fundamental, really important stuff, things, you know, kind of issues like state registration and, and all of that. Yeah, that's, and people see that as the kind of, uh, or kind of the ultimate goal. I don't think it is the ultimate goal. I think that is important and that, you know, it needs to be acknowledged and, and kind of worked with and achieved. Um, but actually, I think kind of, you know, a more important goal is to, is the, is kind of the membership actually being more engaged in what's happening, um, mm. both for themselves and for other people, you know. And I think kind of hopefully that's that's one thing that's that's increased and that kind of like it, that will increase further um, as we go along. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think particularly, I think I suppose one of the issues, and I know I came into it, the, into it, the kind of being chair with it in my head in terms of like, reinvigorating the regional groups um and that's slowly started and i actually think the online yes exactly that's really is, is one of the ways of actually kind of doing this because um, i think there needs to be that engagement on the on the bottom level and i know there you know some areas like cork has been has um, it's been really good with Raffaella Peaslip. i mean she's been brilliant um kind of helping to pursue that um, and encourage them um and then there, there are some other kind of regional groups that have been happening um i know limerick was going for anyway mm -hmm. but i think you know that can that can certainly increase and that really helps council as well because it feeds yes. through and it you know so it's not just a small group of people on council who meet once a month who have to do all the work there are other people as, as well engaged in this um and 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 it, you know and it, it's it's kind of small steps um you know being on council i think it's great it's a tremendous experience but you know you don't have to do, you know you can be involved in other ways and i think that's it's finding your level and in, in, at, that, at the particular time that you have you know that you can actually commit to um so yeah yeah that's it Just so so yeah. good luck with that thank um, you yeah i know you enjoy it yeah i'm still involved in a few things but um um it's yeah it's it's nice to take a, a break for yourself. You've been very busy, so yeah, you, you need a break. <laughs> I need to retire again. <laughs> well, it's like yes, on the book you retired in twenty seventeen, but like you've been like absolutely nonstop really since then as well. In other sense, uh, it kind of I, yeah, I kind of when I when I when I um, when I retired, I had no idea. I didn't know. I had a kind of a, a vague plan of what was going to happen. Being in chair was not on the on the <laughs> cars tour uh, and that's what happens when you go to an AGM that you haven't been to for kind of however many years but I think the other thing was that I kind of um I didn't realize at the time that I would get get involved and I, I you know I did some work in the Caribbean and the BVI after the hurricane Irma um, and I didn't realize that I was going to end up doing that and that was simply because my son was involved mm. in he was living there at the time and so he was affected by that so yeah. Um, and he he kind of organised something with a psychologist out there um, initially, and then I went out in the February for a month with three three of the final year students, yeah, um, Agnieszka, Fiona, and Ruth. Um, and then I went out again in September with um, a girl called Polly and Maria McGee from Cork to do some more work and that was so that wasn't planned so <laughs> there's been a number of different things which have just kind of happened so i'm not gonna i'm not sure what's going to happen in the future but um, i've got a few plans yeah wonderful great um i hope putting your feet up over christmas is one of the plans like yeah, well, I'm, some time. I'm very grateful for you coming on and I appreciate that you're taking the time out um, to have a chat. Pleasure, Vicky. Thank you so much for asking me. No problem at all. <laughs>